the new 5-axis toolpath optimizer command gives us improved 4 and 5-axis simultaneous toolpaths. This gives us two major benefits. It gives us improved simulation within AlphaCam and Center Simulator. So if we have a look at this part here, we see the tool comes up to the top and at top dead center it rotates by 180 degrees. We don't want this to happen because this may damage the part. The new 5-axis toolpath optimizer will eliminate this. The second benefit it gives us is improved CNC code generation, helping us with our post processors. When we talk about the 5-axis toolpath optimizer, and we're talking about a head head machine, there are four different configurations. So we have a look at the um, origin on the screen. We have Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z with our A axis rotating about our X, our B axis rotating about our Y, and our C axis rotating about our Z. So if we look at this configuration with the tool pointing along X minus, we can see that we have rotation about the Y, so the tool rotates over the Y axis. In this configuration, the tool rotates about the x-axis and points along y minus. But in this case here, we have a clockwise tilt. If we look at configuration number three, the head is rotating about the y-axis. And also, we have a clockwise tilt in this configuration. And then finally, configuration four, the tool is rotating about the x-axis. Before I create a tool path on the part on the screen, the blade, well, the first thing I want to do is define a tool to use. What I have on the screen is a 2D geometry that represents my tool holder. Now, when I put my tool holder in my machine configuration, what I want to happen is to this face here to meet the spindle nose. So my gauge length is going to be from the end to this face here. So what I want to do is find out um, the dimension. So I'm going to go to the CAD menu and I'm going to go down to dimension. I'm going to do a vertical dimension. And if I go to configure, I have a new option here which is use fraction. If I switch that off initially, so I'm going to do from the end point of here to the end point of here, and it creates a dimension for me, which is 69 and a half. If I go back to configure and switch use fraction on, and I go from the end point of here to the end point of here, we can now we've got fractional dimensions made available to us. Uh, very useful, especially in the American market. Now what I can do is define my tool. So I'm going to go to the machine menu and I'm going to go to define tool. What we now have is some nice new modern tool drawings. I'm going to use ball end. Tool number, offset number, length of the tool from the front of the collet to the end, which I'm going to say is 70. Diameter is 16. I'm going to put some fixed speeds and speeds in here, so let's go 4,000 RPM, 3,000, 2,000, and I'm going to go to simulation, and I'm going to use tool holder using profiles, the geometry that I've drawn previously, and now it's asking me for the gauge length. So the gauge length is the length of the tool plus the distance from the nose to where I want to go into the spindle nose, which is 69.5. So OK to that, pick the geometry defined in the cross section. If I go into my folder, I can now save this as my tool. Isometric view. 
going to go to the machine menu, select that tool that I've just defined, I'm going to go to the machine menu and I'm going to undertake some 3D surface machining. I'm going to do some 4-axis simultaneous YZ and I'm going to use parameter lines. Safe rapid level, let's put a value in for here, let's say 50, wrap it down to 10. Step over, I'm going to put it 2, reduce it a bit. Pick the surfaces to machine. Pick this to start point, second point to, to give me direction. What I want to do is machine this, so um, first of all I'm going to add a machine configuration. So if I right click, open machine, and we've got defined head head. So all the movement is on the head of this machine tool here. Now, just note the view that I'm in in AlphaCam at the moment, which is the ISO view. If I right click and go to simulator, what this latest version does, it maintains the view from AlphaCam into the simulator. Before it didn't used to do this, it would always go to the X and Y view. So if I now play this and just speed it up slightly, so this is a simulation um, that we would get. Um, this may not be correct for the machine because our post processor would avoid this. So what's happening is the tool is pirouetting at the top of the cut, maybe creating damage. But obviously at this point here we would have to explain that this is not what is actually going on on the machine. Well the 5-axis toolpath optimizer allow us, allows us to rectify this. So if I exit out of here, I'm going to go to the operations pane of the project manager and if I right click 5-axis toolpath optimizer is available to us here. If I switch this on, use the optimizer, OK to that. So if I right click now, go back to the simulator and play. We'll see that these um, pirouette moves have actually now disappeared. So that's what the 5-axis toolpath optimizer does for us. So the one thing it does, it actually gives us a far better simulation of actually what's going on the machine. The second thing that it gives us is improved NC code, and that's what we're going to have a look at next. So here I have a, um, a simple toolpath on the top of a solid. If I go to my Layers tab and have a look at my machine configuration, we'll see that in here that we have some more settings. So this machine that I've got here, it tilts about the Y-axis. So on this machine here, I can say I'm going plus 100 and minus 100 in the tilt. And now what we've got to do is set the limits for the rotary axis, which is about Z. And in this circumstance, I've got, I can go to minus 360 and plus 360. So if we look at this component part here, and I just quickly run the simulation, the AlphaCam simulation. The tool is running from 0 degrees and it's running around to minus, minus 315 degrees. Well, when we looked at the limits in the machine configuration, we can see that the machine will go to minus 360, so the code for this will be um, fine. So if I go to the operations, if I just right click and I go to 5-axis toolpath optimizer, just make it switch, make sure it's switched on there. I can right click, I can send to simulator, and play. We can see that the graphics in the simulator has been enhanced, we've got a new origin, and also we've got some reflection on the part. So the tool goes around there fine. Let's exit out of here, and if I go to the Farm menu, I can list the NC code. So if we have a look at this code, I can see in here 
that I've got a B positive, a tilt axis of B positive, and the C starting at zero, which I would expect. And if I go to the end of the path, I'm moving round to approximately minus 315 degrees. If I go to my machine configuration, and I right click, and I go to machine configuration, well let's say my machine now, rather than going from minus 360 to plus 360, is going to go from minus 270 to plus 270. Now if we look at these head, head type configurations, what we do have are cables that run down to the spindle that allow me to have drive uh, power, but obviously these these uh, cables can't wind up, wind up, wind up on the head, otherwise these would snap. So we have limits to how far the rotary axis will move. So in this case it's minus 270 and plus 270. Now as we can see here, my maximum angle is min minus 315, which is more than minus 270. So in this case here, what has to happen is the head needs to wind up before it goes round in order to, for it to undertake the whole of the toolpath. So if I just go to the operations now, this is now blue. We'll note that whenever we have an operation that needs updating, as well as having the asterisk in front of it, it's now colored blue. That's new in this version. So if I right click now, an update and I send to simulator and play the head is now winding itself up to allow me to machine all the way around the component with the, without the tool lifting now this is a very very powerful bit of functionality something that we've had to do previously in the post-processor. So if we exit the simulator and go to the file menu and list NC code, so we'll see now that we've got a C180 move but we've now got a negative tilt axis. And if we come round and now we're coming to a value of about minus 135 which is uh, minus 315 uh, plus 180 degrees.